Hey guys, this is Biology Week 2, Homework Help for Transition Students. Here are your assignments. Um, so you have three reading sections. For each reading section, you have to do um, the vocabulary words. So you have term, definition, and the picture. I have created a um, Google Sheet or Google Doc for you that has a table in it. So the term is in there. You need to put in the definition and a picture. At the end of each section, you have to do a summary of the reading section, which I'll walk through with you. Um, and then at the end of the chapter, there's an assessment. And again, I'll, I'll go through that with you. Um, so for each week, um, last week it was chapter 14, and we did all these things. This week it's chapter 15. Check with your teacher um, on how they want you to turn in the work. I know one of your teachers wants it on lined paper versus a Google Doc. You might want to talk to her and see if she'll accept a Google Doc, um, which would be much easier than re rewriting everything, but you'll have to check with her and see if that's okay. So here is, let's open this link here. So this is your vocabulary chart. This is an example. Um, you are provided a blank one. I left the terms in, but you have to put in your own definition and picture. Okay, so artificial selection um, occurs when developing new breeds of dogs or new strains of crop plants. Darwin inferred that if humans could change species by artificial selection, that perhaps the same process could work in nature. Natural selection is Darwin's theory. Um, if given enough time, a population, like sunflowers, could be modified to produce a new species. So you can see with the camels that it is uh, a good idea for a camel to have a long neck because the trees that grow in their environment are very tall so they have to have that long neck in order to eat the leaf. Um, so over time, he's saying that the ga the ca um, the camel, the giraffe, uh, grew a longer neck, okay? So it could reach those tree leaves. Evolution predicts that an organism's body parts are more likely to be modified, um, modifications of ancestors' parts than they are to be entirely new features. So it's saying over time, um, if you look at the picture here, over time, things change, right? But it, it's, not, it's not a matter of just coming out of nowhere, okay? Derived traits are newly evolved features, such as feathers, do not appear in the fossils of common ancestors. So derived traits is a trait where um, you can see that um, in the original lap over time it developed um, some of those scales or tail spines okay ancestral traits um, are more primitive such as teeth and tails that do not appear in ancestral forms transitional uh, fossils are uh, provide detailed patterns of evolutionary change okay so let's look at the picture um, so we have, um, let's see here. So we can see um, the host, recent common ancestor of this little critter. So he has a fuzzy tail, big ears, whiskers, skinny tail. Um, and then you have uh, present day species. So the gain and loss of fuzzy tails. So um, the homologous structures uh, is when um, organism body parts are more likely to be changed or modified um, of their ancestors' body parts, okay? So um, then they are to be entirely new. So they're not entirely new features. They're just changing over time. 
okay? The vestial structures are structures that are the reduced form. So a vestial structure, you have to remember, is just getting smaller. It's a reduced structure. Analogous structure um, can be used for the same per... Um, I should change that, but um, it's similar in construction, but are not inherited from a common ancestor. So you have two species, a bird and a butterfly. They have similar um, wings, okay? But they didn't come from the same ancestor. An embryo, you can see the embryo in the picture here. Um, it's growing, okay? So this is an embryo. Um, is an early pre-birth pre -birth stage of an organism's development. Okay, biogeography, um, saying that evolution is linked with climate and geological forces, especially plate tectonics, which is uh, the movement of those plates. Um, the earth is made up of plates that gradually shift over time, and as they separate, the animals um, that live in these different places might have a different type of home, so they're going to change to be able to survive in their home, okay? Fitness just means, um, basically how fit you are, um, as a species. Um, so it measures the relative contribution an individual trait makes to the next generation. So, um, if it is good to have, um, you know, pokey horns on a beetle, then it would stand to reason that that organism, that beetle, would keep producing that trait. Mimicry is when um, one species evolves to resemble another species. So you can see this butterfly here and has a little, looks like an eyeball on it, but it, it doesn't. But it's trying to look, then it's doing this to look a little scary because another predator might look at that and say, oh, it's a snake, but it's actually just a moth or something, okay? And then camouflage, you're probably familiar with that word. Um, you see this lizard here with its mouth open? Well, when his mouth is closed, he looks like a leaf, okay? So let me see. Go back to our slide. Okay, so so for fifteen point one, um, Charles Darwin boarded the HMS Beagle in eighteen thirty one to travel to South America to collect samples or animals, rocks, and plants. Actually, end animals, rocks, and plants. He learned over time that species. So we're talking about animals, plants, insects, everything that's alive, okay, um, can change over time. The basic principles of natural selection that he saw was that in a group of the same species, they have differences. He saw that they look similar to their parents and that many animals have more babies that could survive so that enough would be able to survive to keep the species going. I notice I have a few spelling errors here. Sorry, guys. He also saw that if a characteristic of the animal was good for survival, then the next generation would have that characteristic too, um, such as the fan-shaped tail of a pigeon. He used the term evolution. Evolution is all of the changes that occur in an organism, so plant, animal, um, bugs, insects, everything, um, over a long period of time. Okay, so... The vocab I did was actually 15.1 um, and 15.2. I combined them because 15.1 uh, only have three vocabulary words. So keep that in mind. So here's the summary um, for 15.2. Darwin's book on the origin of species talks about natural selection. One support for evolution is fossil records. There are different types of traits. Derived traits are new traits and ancestral traits are older ones. Scientists look and see how species change from ancestral traits to derived traits. This shows changes over long period, periods of time. Also structural or structure change, I think also structural change over time. 
Homeologous uh, structures are similar traits. Vestigial structures are when a structure isn't needed for that animal or species anymore. And then remember, it gets smaller. Adaptation is when animals, plants, and other species change so they can survive in an environment. So adaptation, you're going to change in order to survive. The better fitness or ability to adapt to its environment, the better its chance it will survive. And that's also de um, has to do with passing down um, traits that help that species survive. Mimicry is when animals and plants look like another one, like the moth with the eyeball. They do this to help them survive. For example, the California king snake looks like a poisonous western coral snake. It's hard for predators to tell them apart, so they stay away from both of them. Bacteria also learn how to adapt to medicine. People take to get rid of bacteria when they get sick. So the medicine stops working because the bacteria has learned how to survive. Okay, so let's look at vocabulary chart 15.3. Okay, so this is the Hardy-Weinberg principle. It says when allic, allic frequencies remain constant, a population is in genetic equilibrium. So let's open this up. Okay, so this is the frequency of dominant allies, big P, plus frequency of recessive <laughs> allies, little q, equals 1. So purple is dominant to pink. If there are only two allies for a trait in a population, then purple is going to be dominant, okay? Genetic drift. So um, let's look at our picture. So we have 5 to 5, 5 to 1, um, because they get swatted, killed off. And then there's reproduction and then the ratio is 10 to 2, okay? So it looks like they swatted all those blue ones. So if the blue ones are weaker, it looks like we're going to have more red. Well, let's read the definition. In a large populations, in large populations, enough allies drift to ensure that the allic frequency of the entire population remains relatively constant from one generation to the next. Smaller populations, however, the effects of genetic drift become more pronounced and the chances of losing an ally become greater. So in this one, you can see they're almost going to lose the blue ones, okay? But in a larger population, that wouldn't happen as often. Okay, so founder effect. The founder effect is an extreme example of genetic drift. The founder effect can occur when a small popula population settles in a location separated from the rest of the population. So, let's look at this, let's see. So here's the mother population, you can see it's a mix. And then we have the founder effect, the new population, okay? And it's creating um, kind of an isolation of the new population because um, those species, say they're lions, they're going to mate with each other, build a family with each other, so they're not going to be as diverse, or let's just say they won't have as many yellow and red, they're just all going to be mostly yellow, okay? Bottleneck occurs when a population declines to a very low number and then rebounds, so it comes back. The gene pool of the rebound population often is genetically similar to that of the population at its lowest level. That is, it has re reduced diversity. So it's very similar. There's not a lot of differences. Okay, so you can see, um, you know, you kind of have a stable population and then something happens um, to their environment or food supply, something, and then maybe... Um, you know, if it's water, drought, and then, you know, it rains a lot, then there's a recovery and it comes back. And the species or the animal, plant, insect that comes back is very similar to the one that was dying off. 
stabilizing selection, it operates to eliminate extreme expressions of a trait when the average expression leads to higher fitness. So let me read that again because I was confused even reading it. So it operates to eliminate extreme expressions. Okay, so extreme expressions of traits um, when the average expression leads to higher fitness. So you're not going to have these weird traits or these traits that don't help. You're going to have traits that help the species survive, have good fitness, okay? And here's the picture. It's just a graph. Um, not too helpful, but <laughs> you, maybe you could f Google one that's better, okay? Directional selection. This form of selection increases the expression of the extreme versus, versions of a trait in a population. So this form of selection increases the expression of the extreme version of a trait in population. So that to me, that seems like the exact opposite. Okay, and so... But maybe the, the extreme uh, is good for fitness. I mean, okay? Disruptive selection. This form of selection increases the expression of the extreme version. Can we just do that? Let me see. Oh, I did it twice. That's why. Okay. Punctuation, punctuated equilibrium. Attempts to explain such abrupt transitions in the fossil record. Okay. So abrupt transition means big changes. Okay. So something big just happened. Okay. So, um, let's see. Can't see very good. Trends. Oh, I can't see. I'll come back to this, but just remember that. So punctuated is like a period or exclamation point. And then equilibrium has to do with kind of a balance. So um, you have, you're looking at fossil records. You know, remember those layers of um, earth? And then all of a sudden you see this big change, Okay. Post-zygotic isolating mechanism. So, the the pre-zygotic isolating mechanism prevent reproduction by making fertilization unlikely. Okay, so these mechanisms prevent genotypes from entering a population's gene pool through geographic, ecological, behavioral, other differences. Okay, so let me. Reduce this a little bit. I should have worn my glass. Oh, there's my glass. Whoops. Right. Whoops. My bad. Um. Maybe just over to get my glasses and then I hit the button. Okay. So let's go back to these horses here. Okay. So we have um. Usually mules um, reproduce. It was, I still can't see it. it. Okay, so it cannot, the mule hybrid, it says cannot reproduce. So you have a horse and a donkey. They mate, and then they're saying that the hybrid cannot reproduce, okay? So um, this is, and then... This happens through geographic, so that's more like um, location, ecological, um, their, their home, um, and other differences, okay? Sexual selection. So the most um, common form of natural selection is stabilizing selection. It operates to eliminate extreme expressions of a trait when the average expression leads to higher fitness. Okay, so I have sexual selection, then I have stabilizing selection. So you might, I think that I've made an error here. So um, let me see. Let's look at the picture here. So I, I may have, I can come back to this um, in the next video because I think this is that sexual selection, stabilizing selection that I've made an error here. So let's just skip that one. Um, let's see. Allopatric spe 
speciation. I know it doesn't, it doesn't sound like that, but that's the best I'm going to do. Okay, so a physical barrier divides one population into two or more populations. The separate populations eventually will contain organisms that, if enough time has passed, will no longer be able to breed su successfully with another. So we have the original population. They get divided. Maybe it's the plates separating, um, so they're not on the same land anymore. And then they're isolated from each other. And then now we have two different species or two different speciations. Okay, sympatric and speciation. Species evolves into a new species without a physical barrier. The ancestor species and the new species live side by side during this process. So you have the original population and within the population, and then if there's no uh, geographical or there's no um, separation. It's just, I think it has to do with how close they are to each other. So they're going to be breeding with each other. Um, and so that's why you probably have two different ones there. Adaptive radiation. Divergent evolution can occur in a relatively short time when one species gives rise to many species in response to the creation of new habitat or another ecological opportunity. So adaptive radiation, we have, um, whoa, my goodness, that's interesting. Okay, so if, um, if you have, uh, say this bird has to eat something, that requires him to have a long beak, okay, a sh long, sharp beak, um, then over time, he's going to modify or adapt, evolve to have uh, a longer, sharper beak. Gradualism. Gradualism and punctuation equilibrium are two competing models describing the tempo of evolution. So gradualism just is that over time, slowly over time, that um, there is the evolution. Okay. Let's go back to this one up here real quick. Okay, so the... the Okay, so let's go back to the slides. Okay, so the summary of 15.3, let's look at that. The hardy weinberg principle says that changes, for example, to animals won't happen unless they need to because its genetics are already what is needed to survive in its environment. If it needs to change, it will. There are five conditions for genetic equilibrium, which means the animal doesn't need to change. Most times, it does need to change okay, or evolve because it doesn't meet all the requirements. The requirements are genetic drift, no gene flow, no mutations, and mating must be random, and no natural selection. Genetic drift in small populations can cause the animal to lose an ally. Gene flow is when new genes enter the population. Because animals, plants, and other species don't live all by themselves, sometimes they pick up new genes. Non-random mating causes inbreeding because animals usually mate with animals close to them. Mutations are random and change genes. This gives the material for natural selection to work. Natural selection changes things based on which animals are the strongest in the population. So in most cases, animals are going to change over long periods of time. Sometimes, and it should be TWO, sometimes two populations split up because they have different environments. So they change the way they look so they can camouflage or hide themselves. Convergent evolution happens when, <clears throat> when animals have similar traits but live in different parts of the world. This happens because their environments are alike. Sometimes animals change very slowly over time. This is the theory of gradualism. Fossil records show this is not always true because sometimes animals change fast. This is the theory of punctuated equilibrium. 
Okay, so um, I think that is it for week two. Oh no, I'm lying. Okay, we have we still have the chapter fifteen assessment, which is the funnest part. Okay, so at the end of the chapter, you'll see an assessment. Okay, so number one, they're asking you to replace the underlying portion of the sentence below with the words from the study guide to make each sentence correct. So I've already done that. So number one, natural selection could modify a population enough to produce a new species. Two, artificial selection was used to produce purebred Chihuahuas, <laughs> I can't say that, and Cocker Spaniels. Three, natural selection is a mechanism for a theory developed by Charles Darwin. Okay, understand key concepts. So which best describes the prevailing view about the age of Earth and evolution between before Darwin's voyage on the Beagle? B, species evolved rapidly during the first 6,000 to a few hundred thousand years. <laughs> Five, which statement about the tortoise above would be part of an explanation for tortoise evolution based on natural selection? B, tortoises with dome shells have more young than tortoises with flat shells. Six, open-ended. Summarize Darwin's theory of evolution by using an example. And you guys can use any, you know, example that makes sense, okay? All right, so... This are, I'm just going to call it the arch because there's no way I'm going to pronounce that. The arch shows that it shares many features with modern birds while retaining ancestral dinosaur features. Um, seven, how is artificial selection similar to natural selection? So natural selection organisms change over time to promote survival. Artificial selection is, is done to produce change in species to create a desired trait. So it's like dog breeding. Think critically. Sequence events leading to evolution by natural selection. So I wasn't sure if, if I was on uh, target with this one, but um, I put variation, her heritability, inherit, inherit, inherit ability over production and reproductive advantage. Okay, number nine. What is the likely evolutionary effect on a species of an increase in global temperature over time. So how does heat change the um, species? So I was thinking um, that in, in order for them to survive, they would have to sweat more, uh, maybe change color, um, and then um, other cooling ability changes. The sentence below include terms that have been used incorrectly. Make the sentence true, okay? So anatomical parts that have a reduced function in an organism are vestial structures. Fitness is a measure of the relative contribution an individual trait makes to the next generation. Mimi cry occurs when two or more species evolve adaptations to resemble each other. 13. These organisms have similar features that are considered what kind of structure? Analogous. Okay, I know I said that one wrong too, but um, there's a picture in the book, okay? So that's what that refers to in your assessment, okay, at the end of the chapter. Uh, the photo of the bird, again, it's in your book, um, shows what kind of morphological adaptations, and it's camouflage. Which is not an example of a morphological adapt adaptation? A cytochrome, okay, which you can read about in your biology book a little bit more. Um, 16, industrial melanism could be considered a special case of which of the following? D, structural adaptation. 17, which sets of structures are homeo homeologous? D, a whale flipper and a bird's wing. 18, short answer. Describe how cytochrome C provides evidence of evolution. The fact that many organisms have the same complex molecules suggests that these molecules evolved early in the history of life and were passed on to the life forms that had lived on Earth. 
What can be concluded from the fact that many insects no longer are resistant to certain pesticides? So in, I said that insects have adapted and evolved to survive, okay? So they're used to all that Roundup, and they just get stronger. So um, it doesn't bother them too much anymore. Um, why are fossils considered to provide the strongest evidence supporting evolution? Um, fossils location gives clues as to the age, so that you've got the layer, and so the fossils that are deeper down are older. Radiometric testing of the fossil also tells you the, more exactly the age of the fossil. And the fossils show structural uh, changes over time of species, plus they could study the species depending on how much information the fossil gives them. How could you design an experiment to show that a species of small fish had the ability to evolve a camouflage color pattern? So I said place a fish in an aquarium and watch to see over time if they blend in with their environment. I think you would have to wait a very long time, though. Okay. Uh, an evolutionary biologist is studying several species of closely related lizards found on Cuba surrounding islands. Each species occupies a somewhat different niche, but in some ways they all look similar to the green and only lizard found in Florida. Suggests the pattern of lizards' evolution. So I put they have comparative biochemistry and common ancestor ancestry. 23. Um, gradualism, one species evolves over millions of years to become two different but closely related species. Sympat sympatric speciation, a species evolves into a new species without a physical barrier. 25. Genetic drift, the random changes in gene frequency found in small populations. Um, Again, in your book, there's a graph that best represents which kind of selection, A, directional. 27, the plant in the above, again in your book, looks like a cactus, but is classified in a completely separate group of plants. This would be an example of which mechanism? Convergent evolution. Discuss why the Hardy-Weinberg principle rarely is, is often violated in real populations. States that Alec frequencies and populations stay the same unless they are affected by a factor that causes change. Sea stars eat clams by pulling apart the two halves of a clam shell. Discuss how this could result in directional selection of a clam's muscle size. So if the clam wants to stay shut, it needs to have larger um, muscles, okay? Um, compare and contrast genetic drift and natural selection as mechanisms of evolution. Genetic drift allays frequencies happen by chance. Natural selection allay frequencies change by differential reproductive success. Okay, almost there. Two more. Uh, it says draw a graph that would illustrate a population that has a wide variety variation of color from light to dark brown. Then draw on the same graph what that population would look like after several years of stabilizing selection. Label your graph. Okay, so um, it says in a hypothetical population, gray um, and white rabbits are better able to blend with a rocky environment than white rabbits, resulting in diversifying selection. Okay, so I think you're supposed to uh, draw a few more rabbits there, but... I think if you put the lines in, you'll be okay. Okay. Um, all right, last one. What would you conclude about the evolutionary process that produces two unrelated species that share similar niches on different continents? Niches just means like the same kind of little home, like, you know, like in a neighborhood where every single house is sort of the same. Um, that would be an example of a niche, Okay. I would conclude that they would have similar traits. So if an animal lives in a forest, um, same, um, or it says two unrelated species. Okay, so you have two unrelated species living in a forest. They, they would certainly need some similar traits in order to survive in that environment. Okay, so I did make a few mistakes here. Um, with, I know on the vocab, so 
I'll try to email or something the correction on that. And I feel like there might be one, the gr number 23 with gradualism. I know that gradualism is um, when a species evolves over millions of years, but I'm not sure that it becomes two different but closely related species. So I'm going to double check 23 and also check that one vocabulary word. Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know. So go back if you haven't done it and do week one. This is week two. Next is week three. Check with your teachers um, about... <clears throat> I know with um, one of the teachers, she did mention line paper and that um, you could take a photo and turn it in that way. Um, it might be useful for um, some of you, if you're having a hard time um, turning in your work, that you can share a Google Doc with me. Um, or you could take a picture and I can help you turn um, your work in to your teacher. Okay, so please do your work. I'll talk to you soon. Um, and that's it. Bye-bye.